Yeah, so um, uh, first of all, thanks for um, the opportunity to speak here today about this very important topic. I'll just briefly introduce who we are. So Health Action International uh, is a non-for-profit global network and it's completely independent from uh, corporate funding and sponsorship and we work to improve access to medicines and the rational use through advocacy and research. And more in particular, in the European office, we monitor EU uh, policy developments that can have an impact on um, from civil regulation. And, and right now, we are very closely monitoring um, the TTIP negotiations. We think that this uh, trade agreement is uh, particularly relevant because it will be used as a global standard for future uh, free trade uh, agreements. And uh, because it also has a very strong um, regulatory dimension, uh, and this poses concerns over the impact that it can have on, on health protection standards, including uh, on public access to clinical trial data, which is something that we consider it's very important for the protection of, of public health. Um, this data is uh, data about uh, the effects of, of medicines on human beings, so about safety and efficacy profile of medicines, including data about adverse drug reactions, uh, which actually are the, in Europe the fifth most uh, common uh, cause of hospital death. And um, we know, and it's been widely reported, that a number of adverse drug reactions, including deaths, would have been prevented if we would have known the true effects of these medicines. And for instance, Avandia, Biox, Mediator are examples of it, and I think uh, Biox led to up to 10,000 deaths in the US alone, and I think public citizen knows uh, a lot about it. Um, we also think that transparency trial data is very important for the advancement of bi biomedical uh, science, so uh, transparency is good science. And we think we need to have uh, and to know all the information regarding the methods and results of these experiments on human beings so then they can be double checked and, and critically assessed and especially by independent researchers. And uh, the assessments that these researchers do can definitely bring uh, new knowledge uh, and new insight about the, the effects of these medicines. And it has happened already uh, with like Tamiflu and, and Avandia, as you might know. Um, and then there's also like a very strong ethical component um, we have to be in mind that people participating in, in clinical trials do so to help medical research and advance this knowledge and not to help uh, companies uh, to be more profitable. So um, by keeping all this data a secret, it's uh, in a way uh, betraying uh, the, their trust. So um, civil society has been uh, called for a long time for the transparency of medicine safety and efficacy data. And I want to make a reference to the uh, Uppsala Declaration, uh, where Ellen took part and high as well. I didn't because I was 11 <laughs> years old. Ninety-six, <laughs> <laughs> but it was uh, yeah, an international uh, uh, working group, and um, yeah, basically they, they come up with a resolution and they called upon um, the openness and accountability and transparency of um, uh, drug regulatory uh, decision making and processes. Um, because they realized that we have, in particular, in, in the area of access to trial data, a very serious problem. I mean, there's been for a long time little access to this data, um, uh, because uh, the medicines agencies have been kept this data uh, secret, and also we have to be reminded that a lot of this data is never submitted for marketing authorization, and, and, and this, this data is forever lost, um, because it's not published. Um, and at the same time, uh, there are deficiencies in the model for reporting scientific research. So there are a lot of prevailing practices of publication bias, according to which studies are published or not, depending on the results of the study. And also, we see that within published studies, um, there is selective reporting. So benefits are overrated and harms are downplayed. And uh, sometimes adverse uh, drug reactions are not even mentioned at all. And uh, the case of Tommy is an example. Um, so when, when colleagues for the from the Cochrane collaboration compared the data uh, of Tamiflu that was in some clinical study reports with the data that was reported in some articles published in peer-reviewed uh, journals, they realized that while clinical study reports mentioned um, uh, psychiatric-related adverse drug reactions, this information was completely omitted in, in those publications. And we have to think that healthcare professionals and a lot of people rely on these, on these publications, actually. Uh, we know that, unfortunately, only half of all clinical trials have been published, and that studies with positive results are actually as twice as likely, uh, more likely to be published than those with negative results. And unfortunately, reporting biases is a widespread practice in, in, in medical literature. So um, lucky enough, we've had in the use of positive developments uh, in the last years, 
in 2010, the European Ombudsman made a recommendation to the EMA to disclose clinical study reports because he considered that this, um, this data is not commercially confidential and that it's definitely not a trade secret. Um, and this recommendation came uh, as a result of a complaint lodged by the Nordic Ukraine uh, Center, which is an organization that does independent systematic reviews of clinical trials. And they wanted to access um, clinical study reports on two anti-obesity drugs. And the EMA didn't want to disclose this data because they argued that it was commercially confidential. So actually, the ombudsman ruled in favor of the complainants. And as a result of that, uh, the EMA has opened up its policy on access to documents. So uh, in 2010, they adopted a new policy. And since then, they have disclosed upon uh, 2 million pages of clinical study reports, a number of which completely unredacted because the EMA has come to acknowledge that this data is very important for public health uh, and it cannot be considered a commercially uh, confidential information. And in parallel, the EMA has also been working towards the proactive publication of this data. This means publishing clinical study reports in a database that can be accessible. And um, last year, they, they published the first draft of this policy. And what one could see that the EMA was really keen to disclose this data uh, in an open uh, way. And uh, at the same time, we, we in parallel, there have been discussions about a new clinical trials regulation, and, and it was finally adopted some months ago. Um, and this new uh, regulation will mandate, as of 2016 onwards, the summaries of the results of clinical trials to be published in a publicly accessible database, as well as those clinical study reports submitted for market authorization. So once the medicines agency has taken a decision, these clinical study reports will have to be made publicly available. And there's also a key recital in that uh, regulation <coughs> stating that, in general, this data cannot be considered uh, commercially confidential, thus aligning very much with the uh, approach that the EMA has had until now on, on the question of, of access to clinical trial data. And um, we also have seen recently that uh, some medical journals have made very important pro-transparency requirements. So basically, like the EMJ, a British medical journal, so they request those authors want to publish uh, articles about the results of some trials to make a commitment to share the raw data upon request uh, to minimize uh, all this problem on uh, reporting bias. And PLOS ONE is another uh, medical journal that has made some transparency uh, requirements. So unfortunately, we see that despite um, the benefits that the uh, transparency of clinical trial data brings to public health, and despite that this has been acknowledged by many stakeholders, the pharmaceutical industry keeps claiming that this data is, is commercially uh, confidential information and thus cannot be uh, disclosed uh, to the general public. And we are seeing that they are now using TTIP as a platform to advocate for a uniform protection of commercial confidential information and trade secrets to prevent as much as possible the disclosure of, of, of this data to the general public. And um, for instance, the pharma, the, um, the US organization uh, representing the pharmaceutical industry, they, they submitted some comments to the USTR in terms of TTIP, and they clearly refer to the EMA's policy as something that concerns them, and they call upon the US government to engage with the EU in every available venue to ensure what they call responsible uh, data sharing. And some of these requests have also come from some US institutions, such as the AMCHAM uh, EU, and uh, on their position on, on TTIP, they clearly refer to clinical trial data as you know, commercial confidential information. They refer to TRIPS and the fact that the EU has to comply with TRIPS. And they call upon also the US to, to raise trade-related concerns with these EMA policies in the context of, of the TTIP discussion. So again, they're using TTIP as a platform uh, to prevent as much as possible the disclosure of clinical uh, trial data. And we do think, and we see that TTP is, uh, is a threat to uh, data transparency, um, and we clearly see that it, it can be restricted uh, access to data through especially the IP chapter and the regulatory chapter of TTP. So regarding the IP chapter, as Gail mentioned before, um, the US and the EU want to um, include the, the protection of trade secrets in TT in the IP chapter. And um, in the EU, in order to harmonize as much as possible this uh, protection of trade secrets, um, the Commission put forward a proposal uh, on trade secrets, which not only um, has a very broad definition of this question, but also it does not include a clear exemption on the grounds of, of the 
public interest and the protection of, of, of public health. And we fear that the trade secrets will indeed be used uh, by the pharmaceutical industry to justify data the disclosure of clinical trial data, and especially if it's under TTIP and under the IP chapter. And as Gail mentioned, in the EU, in general, trade secrets are not considered as an exclusive right and as an IP uh, right. And um, surprisingly enough, uh, um, FPI, the very same day that the Commission made uh, officially this proposal, FPI issued a statement welcoming this trade secrets directive and calling upon almost every aspect of the drug development process to be considered know how, trade secrets, and including um, the clinical trials phase. Um, and as I said, we think that uh, data disclosure can be restricted through the IP chapter, but also through the regulatory uh, chapter, because the EU, we've seen in the official position uh, on TTIP, that they want to uh, strengthen the exchange of information, commercially commercial information, and trade secrets information between the EMA and FDA. And this is really tricky because it involves that at some point it, there will be a uniform and harmonized approach about what is commercially confidential and what is so commercially confidential that can only be uh, exchanged between us and not disclosed to the general public. And um, taking into account that the US has, at this moment in time, a more restrictive approach uh, regarding access to clinical trial data, we fear that our standards will be lowered and we definitely think that the relations between the EMA and the FDA is not something that should be uh, regulated under TTIP. Answer. Can you come to a conclusion? Oh, okay. Um, already? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just want to say that we, okay, we've seen clearly that there's been TTIP and, and going discussions and, and concerns and, and pressures that come from pharmaceutical industry, US, and also from the Commission. Actually, uh, they have uh, impacted and, and, and they have uh, shifted uh, the, the EMA's policy on proactive publication, and now the EMA. Uh, considers that actually some of the data um, is commercially confidential and, and while some months ago it considered that this data was actually uh, not commercially confidential and could be um, disclosed to the general public um, and actually the, the, they have released the, the last draft of this proactive publication policy um, and we see that they, they propose very restrictive terms of use so they want users to acknowledge that trial data is protected by copyrights and proprietary rights, and a lot of experts in IP law have said that, uh, that these are not <coughs> these rights are not uh, uh, given by law actually. So um, and uh, they also, as I said, consider no a number of sections of clinical study reports now to be commercially conf confidential information. And in view of, 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 of all of these recent changes that have happened at the EMA. Uh, level and, and all these discussions about TTIP and commercial confidentiality and trade secrets, we call upon the EU and the US to uphold the principle that clinical trial data is a public good. This is information about the effects of medicines on human beings. Um, we call upon them to take into account that public health always overrides any consideration on commercial confidentiality. We don't want TTIP to include any provision that can restrict disclosure of clinical trial data, neither in the IP chapter nor in the regulatory chapter. Um, we definitely wanted to refrain from giving rights uh, to pharmaceutical companies that are not firmly established in law, and we call upon them to read TRIPS and understand TRIPS in the context of the Doha uh, Declaration, which is the last slide. Um, so we do think that public access to clinical trial data is very important for public health, and this is something that has to be entrained in law, and the clinical trials regulation in, these, in the EU is a good example. We definitely oppose any attempt to self-regulate, um, and we have seen that now companies, because they see that there's some political will to regulate these and, and to mandate the disclosure of trial data, they come up with their own proposals um, to disclose this data on a very voluntary basis and on their own terms, and this is something that we clearly oppose. This is something that has to be requested and entrained in, in law. Thank you. Thank you very much.